Another uh, remarkable thing I'd like everybody to consider, along inherent in this worldview, is that somehow Noah and his family were able to build a wooden ship that would house 14,000 individuals. There are 7,000 kinds, and then and every, there's a boy and a girl for each one of those. So it's about 14,008 people. And these people were unskilled. As far as anybody knows, they had never built a wooden ship before. Furthermore, they had to get all these animals on there, and they had to feed them. And I understand that Mr. Ham has some explanations for that, which I frankly find extraordinary. But uh, uh, this is the premise of the bit. And we can then run a test, a scientific test. People in the early 1900s built an extraordinary large wooden ship, the Wyoming. It was a six-masted schooner, the largest one ever built. It had a motor on it for winching cables and stuff. But this boat had uh, a great difficulty. It was uh, not as big as the Titanic, but it was a very long ship. It would twist in the sea. It would twist this way, this way, and this way. And in all that twisting, it leaked. It leaked like crazy. The crew could not keep the ship dry. And indeed, it eventually foundered and sank a uh, loss of all 14 hands. So there were 14 crewmen aboard a ship built by very, very skilled shipwrights in New England. These guys were the best in the world at wooden shipbuilding. And they couldn't build a boat as big as the ark is claimed to have been. Is that reasonable? Is that possible? That the best shipbuilders in the world couldn't do what uh, eight unskilled people, uh, men and their wives, uh, were able to do. Okay, so you see the objection he's raising there on how could they have built it, and even if they built it, how would it have sustained the flood given that this other ship that he's referring to sank? So that ship is the Wyoming, and in order to debunk him, we're simply going to look at the history of the Wyoming ship. Okay, and so uh, the Wyoming was built in Maine in the early 1900s, okay? There was uh, a lot of shipbuilding going on in that area, and they wanted to connect east and west states. And so the governor, Governor Brooks of Wyoming, um, he decided to back the endeavor of the shipbuilding in Maine financially. Um, now... I'm not sure, I guess, if it was his own funds or state funds, but at any rate, the governor of Wyoming wanted to back the building of the ship, which is why it was called the Wyoming after his state. Uh, the maiden voyage, pay attention now, the maiden voyage was to Virginia from Maine, and that took place in 1909, okay? Uh, it was made to carry coal and coal mine supplies, and the size of the ship as big as it was, that was part of the business structure because the steamships of the time had to stop uh, every so often, but they said this ship would be the sails and everything. It could just go, and if it was big, it could carry a lot of coal, and so um, from a business standpoint, it would be worth it to build the Wyoming so big so it could carry a lot of coal in one run. Uh, it was 450 feet long. It weighed 3,730 tons, uh, the masts, of which it had six masts, they were 126 feet tall, and there was over 1.5 million feet of pine boards, you know, to build up the hole and everything. Over 1.5 million feet of boards went into building this massive wooden ship. Um, there was an issue, due to the size, there was an issue of sagging where uh, the middle part kind of goes down and then also there would be hogging if there was no uh no cargo in the middle then the ends are heavier and so it kind of goes that way and they call that hogging so sagging and hogging would happen uh but that was an issue right off the bat so what did they do they uh they put these iron braces in the ship to keep it from twisting back and forth too much like uh, Bill Nye is talking about in that clip, and I want to read a verse of Scripture to you. Now, this is before the flood, 
takes place. This is Genesis chapter 4 and verse number 22. It says, And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. So, uh, to the objection of Mr. Nye there, that uh, they couldn't have been able to build this. I mean, they built this big ship in the 1900s. How could they have built it? Um, built something, some kind of a large ship similar to this uh, by building the ark in Noah's day. Well, we see here that in Genesis chapter 4, before the flood, that man had already figured out how to do metalworking. Man had already figured out how to work iron and how they were able to fix the issue of, of this uh, sagging and hogging then was with these iron braces. And so metalworking is something that would have been possible. They could have used metal tools and very other types of metal braces, perhaps, or whatever, brackets, I don't know, to uh, get the ark constructed. So to answer the question of how could they have built that back then, like uh, they were building ships in the 1900s, well, they had iron in the early 1900s, they had iron workers in the days of Noah, and so uh, there's actually a similarity there. If you would just go back and read the Bible to discover that metalworking happened before the secular uh, textbooks say uh, that that happened. Of course, they're just going off archaeology, and so the archaeologists haven't dug up perhaps the evidence that supports that before the flood, sure enough, man knew how to work with iron and brass and, and uh, other things. So they would have had that, that metal working on the table as something that they could use in Noah's day to help build it, just like they did in the early 1900s. They had the same advantages in that respect. Okay, but anyway, so the main voyage was in 1909. It did have that issue, but they were able to correct it with the iron braces. Uh, now, it served for several years after the maiden voyage, uh, which the maiden voyage included a fierce storm. There was a gale, they say, came up, a you know, strong storm at sea, but it went through it and survived it. Um, the Wyoming ended up being a complete financial success. Governor Brooks got his money back many times over because he was able to make money off dividends from his financial backing and investment in the ship, but then they they sold the ship after so many years into the hands of uh, someone else. Actually, it ended up going uh, to Europe, and so he sold the ship and was able to get back more than it cost to build it, plus he was making money the whole time throughout those years that it was being used. So this ship... it. You know, it seems like Bill Nye is saying they built this ship, put it out to sea, and the thing sank because it was too big. That he's he's that's the way he's painting it. But actually, this thing uh, served as a cargo ship for many years and was very successful and very profitable for the people that backed its building initially. Later, the Wyoming also would handle coal transportations in Europe, which means it successfully crossed the Atlantic, where it sank was back uh, in North America. So it crossed the Atlantic multiple times. It didn't, oh, it was bending this way and this way and this, you know, eventually, yeah, that happened, but not right off the bat like he's making it out to be. Um, so finally, it would sink in 1924 due to a nor'easter, which is basically like a, a blizzard hurricane uh, in the northern waters. And so that nor'easter is what did what Bill Nye is describing in the video of the bending this way and this way and this way until it snaps in half and goes down and everybody on board dies. That did happen. Okay. But the thing to realize here is that that ship managed to do just fine on the waters for 15 years. For 15 years, that thing was going. It didn't break. It didn't sink. I mean, and it was very profitable for the people that built it. And so, it handled well, that large ship that was built out of wood, like they would have had wood in Noah's day, they would have had iron, and it, it did just fine. Now, if that ship that he's trying to use as comparison managed just fine for 15 years, the question we should ask is, how long did the ark have to manage? And there's different ways of calculating it, but the longest um, calculation for the time of the flood is 371 days. Now that factors in 40 days of raining at the beginning. So you'd have to assume that in the first day of rain there was enough to make the ark be buoyant. You know, there was enough standing water for it to be floating, which probably is not the case. But even if you assume all that, the absolute longest that the ark of Noah would even be in use in water is 371 days, which is a year and six days. 
So you've got the ship he's using for comparison was just fine for 15 years from 1909 to 1924. 15 years, it was perfectly fine. And the Ark of Noah only had to last, according to the Bible, a year at the most, a year and six days. So a 15th the amount of time that his comparison uh, was being used in the water. And so you see that that's not a very good point for him because the boat he's pointing to did just fine for much longer a period of time than Noah's Ark would have had to do. And of course, it was crazy bad weather that did eventually sink it, and God's in control of the weather. So if we don't want to sink the uh, Ark, he just doesn't have to allow there to be a, a nor'easter or, you know, some kind of hurricane or something like that. He could just let the water come down, flood the earth, and, and let the Ark just sit in the water until it's time for the waters to abate and go down and no one's to come out and repopulate everywhere. God's in control of the weather. Um, and so this is a weak point. It's interesting to me because I actually came across this clip seeing it says, you know, Bill Nye uh, shatters the Noah myth or debunks Noah or, you know, the ark or something along those lines. And I thought this is a horrible argument. Look at the two ships, right? You've got one that only had to last for a year and six days, and you're comparing it to one that did last of a you know close uh, dimensions that did last in the water for 15 years. So doesn't that actually help prove that the ark could have made it one year if a comparable uh, vessel made it 15 years before it sank due to uh, strong weather? He's actually he thinks he's debunking the Bible. He's actually helping support it with his uh his information there so anyway i just want to make this video debunking bill nye's um demolishing of noah's ark or wh whatever the title of that that clip was i can't even remember but anyway he like like i think i've shown here he's the one that's debunked and all he had to do was crack open a history book to see how ridiculous his claims were